Hey, Yvette Young here, and today I'm here with my friends from Guitar Center, and we're going to be diving into some tones that inspired songs off of the last Covet record. A lot of artists, I think their goal is to grow and constantly develop. And when I first started out playing guitar, I kind of burst onto the virtuosic scene and I felt like maybe I had something to prove or maybe I needed to play something technical to get people's attention or to be respected or taken seriously. But over time, I think I've really matured a little bit more into my voice and I've really been more in touch with what I'm genuinely interested in, in my journey with music and what I want to do with music and also what is sustainable for me to do going forward so that I can keep my passion for it alive. And I realized that I'm just truly passionate about sounds, colors, and textures in the context of songwriting and production. A lot of my guitar playing ended up, for lack of better word, chilling out because I really didn't feel the need to fill up all that space anymore because I have this beautiful palette of colors to help me do it. And, you know, for some people, I think there is value in playing virtuosically and technically. I'm not trying to write that off. But for me, I think I really settled into myself as I just want to make people feel things and I want to use these colors to tell a story. Before we get into playing, I just want to mention, gear-wise, I am playing my signature Ibanez YY10 Slime Green Sparkle Talman into my pedal board and that into a Vox AC10. So for this first tone, I had to go with the chorus sound. I was super heavily inspired by chorus for this last record. I think I was listening to a lot of 80s music like The Cure, Pesh Mode, all that, and I really wanted to just write something that sounded like you could hear it on the radio back then. And I have three different modulation pedals on my board. I have the Caroline Guitar Somersault Lo-Fi Modulator. I have the Walrus Audio Juliana, which is an amazing stereo chorus. But I also have this Maris Mercury X pedal, which is known as a reverb, but it actually has an incredible chorus sound on it. And I actually made my own chorus preset that I think I'm going to use for this riff. <laughs> So I did start with just a super wet chorus tone and about halfway in when I did the more like lead bit, I slapped on a little bit of EQ, a mid boost, and then I also added a little bit of delay just for a little more sustain and to fill out the sound. And I did that with the Noodles by Ground Control, which is an EQ pedal, as well as the Earthquaker Devices Avalanche Run, which is a delay. One thing I really like about the Noodles is it's just super easy setup. There's three switches that you can stomp on and within each switch, you can control the level of where, where you're trying to boost. And I just love the way a mid boost kind of makes my tone break up. I'm playing out of single coils through a tube amp, and I just feel like that slight push is enough to sound almost like a gain pedal or some kind of distortion. And I think I much prefer pushing tubes, the natural sound of tube breakup, to using an actual distortion pedal. So I have a lot of people at shows ask me why on earth I have three delays on my board. And my answer to that is they all accomplish something different. I don't want to have to be tweaking mix or feedback when I'm playing. I just want to play. So I have them all set to different things. I chose the Avalanche Run in particular because I have it set to almost a very short 
feedback sound and also very low in the mix. And then I also have the Carbon Copy Deluxe and each thing is set differently. The Carbon Copy Deluxe is set on a very dramatic repeat style where I think I would use it more as like a rhythmic tool. The avalanche run is set more subtly so that it serves almost like a reverb. And I almost prefer using delay to reverb most times when I play because I enjoy the harmonic content that a delay would add in between. I feel like it sounds more interesting than just like a bunch of ambient space. And it really fills out the sound. So that's what I was aiming for in adding that to the kind of lead tone I was doing. The Galaxy Tape Echo I have is set as a sort of like edge, like rhythmic delay thing that I'll demonstrate later. I thought it'd be kind of useful to show you what each pedal is doing when I build up the sound. So I'll just isolate everything. You can see how it adds up. I'll start with just the chorus. And now I'm gonna add just a little bump in the mids with the noodles. And now I'm just gonna pad it out with that subtle delay on the avalanche run. So I ended up building an entire song around this one tone that I got from chorus and delay. And the song ended up becoming what we now know as Firebird off the last record. But you can also hear that tone on a bunch of other songs, including Love Spell. I was thinking a lot about contrast on writing songs for this last record. And the last riff I showed you was kind of from the more upbeat, happy, light universe. I thought it'd be really fun to show you one of the tones I used for one of the heavier songs off the record. Initially, I thought I'd want to use a fuzz for this riff. I discovered that I really enjoyed the sound of a mid-pushed drive coupled with the sound of a delay. So I ended up using the Electronic Audio Experiments Longsword, which is an op amp based drive. And I'm pushing the mids on that with the ground control audio noodles. And on top of that, I'm adding the Carbon Copy Deluxe, which is an analog delay. <laughs> I mentioned earlier how sometimes um, I like to write a certain way and you know, I get in a rut. I, I tend to write things that sound kind of similar sometimes if I don't have other tools. And I remember being in a situation where I had to demonstrate, I think it was like a fuzz or some kind of drive. And it really just made me chill out with my playing. And I really just let each note sustain. And for some reason, just the color of fuzz or an overdrive, especially coupled with delay, just makes me start writing things <laughs> that are a little bit darker, like maybe I go from major universe to minor universe. So that happened. I, I think if I didn't have any of these effects in front of me, I would have never written a melody like that. But just hearing the sound, I got really excited. And to me, a sign that you've dialed in a really special tone is when it just makes you want to continue playing and you feel really inspired to write more and you just can't get away from that sound. So that's what I experienced when I dialed this one in. And that's how the song Coronal was born. Before we move on to the next tone, I just wanted to touch on the octave pedal that I added as well as some other embellishments. I would say that a lot of times people think of using effects as it's just an always on thing or maybe on for half the song and then you switch. But the way my detail oriented brain always wanted to listen to music was just to have have almost like a different color for each section and to really think of phrasing on a microscopic level dynamically. So I jokingly call a lot of my riffs uh, patchwork riffs because there's just so many different tones being introduced and then taken away. But I think ultimately the overall effect is something that really is dynamic. I chose to add the OC5 on that certain section because I thought it needed a little bit of extra girth and oomph, especially for big open chuggy chords. I just want to sound huge and the OC5 is a great way to sound huge. And 
finally for something a little special, I really wanted to get that punched in the gut feeling. So I really love the Digitech Ricochet, which allows you to have pitch jump either up or down. So I had that pitch slowly plummet. And then on top of that, I added the DD3, which is a digital delay. And that just kind of makes it sound like it's spazzing out, which I love. So for this third riff, I thought it would be fun to show you something that is back in the happy territory, but something that kind of has a more galloping building feel. And I like to accomplish that with the sound of a stack delay. And I'll be using my handy dandy Galaxy Tape Echo from Universal Audio to help me do that. So one of my favorite features about the Galaxy is actually its ability to sustain and self-oscillate. And I've always wanted that out of a bunch of delays because it's such a great way to build dynamics and to kind of make something sound like it's crescendoing into chaos and then suddenly hard cut. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate what that sounds like. So what I had going on there was the Galaxy Tape Echo, along with a little bit of chorus courtesy of the Walrus Audio Juliana. The reason I love the Galaxy Tape Echo is because it is basically emulating a lot of the sounds of the classic Space Echo. And I have it on a setting where I have two tape heads engaged. I believe it's on the second and the third setting at once. And so what that allows for is that effect of having something go back and forth, like a call and response. And I love that sort of feeling when coupled with something that's kind of in three, because it just feels like it's galloping forward. And that's the overall vibe that I wanted to create for writing this riff. The song that you can hear this riff on is called Vanquish. So you probably heard that one moment where I pressed a switch and it oscillated into complete noise. What's going on there is essentially you're turning up the feedback and the mix so that it sounds just like a wall of repeats and I really love the contrast of having that chaos with something more controlled like a rhythmic delay. So, so far I've taken you through some tones that inspired songs off of the last record, Catharsis, but I also want to touch upon some cool little tricks you can do that are unexpected and maybe these are tricks that would sound a bit much if you were to do them all the time, but I like to use them sparingly through my set. One of the things I really enjoyed about playing guitar with the use of pedals is making guitar not sound like guitar. A guitar tone obviously is beautiful, but one of the most exciting things to come out of new guitar playing lately, I think, is just experimental sounds. And that's what I've been all about recently. When I put on my producer hat, I like to think about ways that I can make a riff sound exciting and new and not go stale and have something surprising happen so that people's ears light up. And one of the ways I like to do that is with the Whammy Ricochet by Digitech. I really admire the sort of production that you find in a lot of pop and electronic music. And using the Whammy Ricochet, I kind of want it to sound like I'm just automating an octave up for a second and then having it disappear. Let me show you how I do that. <laughs> So let me unpack a little bit of what just went on there. For the main riff, it was actually just my clean guitar tone out of the AC-10. And then I decided to introduce a little bit of randomizing and I put on my hologram microcosm, which has a panel labeled glitch. And on that panel, there's a mode called interrupt and it just adds a bunch of wonderful unexpected beeps and boops. I've really appreciated abstraction lately in effects because I think I'm such a control freak and I want to play so accurately, but I've really appreciated appreciated being able to relinquish a little bit of control and let the effects do the talking for me. 
And after that, there is one section that I applied the Digitech Ricochet and I had it on a, a setting that was not only an octave, but also dry. So that allows for a little bit of the original signal to shine through, but also I have it on a setting that jumps up an octave. What I love about the Digitech Ricochet is that you can control the octave going up, up to two octaves, down up to two octaves, but you can also control the onset and the return. And I have my onset really short so that it just jumps up and jumps back down. So for this last sound effect, I thought I'd show you a really great way to generate some ambience. I like to use the hologram microcosm for the granules mode and I'm on haze right now and it's just a really great way to generate kind of a repeating pattern and a sound that fills out space. And on top of that, I'm gonna put the avalanche run on reverse mode and I'm going to play with my new favorite pedal that I just got, the Digitech Freakout. It's basically a pitched harmonic feedback generator and if you've ever wanted to just get that exact same feedback every night for a live show, this pedal is for you because you're able to just get the same feedback every single time and choose how quickly you want it to come on and return as well as choose the pitch. So the way that I write is because I'm in so many different tunings, I compose everything. I'm rarely improvising and jamming live. Like the song that I write is the song that I play. But one way I found joy in making every performance a little different is through my improvisation with effects. This is one instrument that I play, but I also view this as an additional instrument that I can jam on every night. Sometimes if I need a little bit of a ambient transition, I'll throw on the microcosm and I'll slap on the freak out and just do a little bit of chord improv to transition into the next song and it's just a really great way to not get bored of the same set every night. Ultimately I just view this as having a large palette of colors. It's really fun to experiment with combining different colors to see what surprising effects you can get. So hopefully you've enjoyed hearing the different colors and textures you can achieve with just a few effects. If you're new to pedals I super encourage you to start out with a few basics maybe just a chorus or a delay and just experiment with that. You can also head to your local guitar center to check out the selection that they have in store and you can try out pretty much any pedal you want. I think it's really fun to obviously try things out before you buy them. And one of my favorite features of going in person is also checking out the vast array of pedals that come in their use section. People bring in things all the time and you never know what odd rare boutique things can end up in your local guitar center that might be difficult to find online. Thanks for tuning in and listen to me make noises with my pedal board. If you liked any of the riffs you heard today, you can hear them off of the newest cover record, Catharsis. And if you see me at a show, be sure to ask about my pedal board or don't ask me about my pedal board. Either way, happy experimenting. <laughs>